Join us for Labour Weekend as we head to Omaru and check out the Heritage Buildings, then off up past Timaru and inland to Claremont Castle. Well, here we are, parked up in the council car park in Omaru. It's all free and gives easy access to the town. Just heading out for a uh, morning walk. We're going to head down the road and have a look at some of the heritage buildings. Here we have the South African War Memorial, which is for the uh, Boer War as we know it. Uh, just recently the council moved this uh, 40 metres south and turned it 180 degrees to allow the intersection traffic to flow better. Omaru is situated 112 kilometres north of Dunedin. It was established in 1858. Interestingly enough, uh, most of the streets are named after British rivers. And uh, in the 1880s, the town centre was a home to some impressive array of buildings made from the local quarried limestone. One thing I've noticed, well, I've never noticed, but on Maroons, they seem to have a bit of a seagull problem on their buildings. Oh, Where there are riches, there are people. And where there are people, stories flow. The library. This is the Waitaki District Council offices. They're doing a great job of doing all these buildings up. Here's the old uh, post office, which has been turned into a restaurant. So it's called the last post. Up a side railway. Just another twist to Omaru's character, the Steampunk Museum. And, uh, pop the two dollars in here. And it makes uh, a few noises, I believe, but I haven't got two dollars, so we're out of luck. View the kaleidoscope wizardry. Nothing to see here except spider webs. We've got the uh, Criterion Hotel at the entrance way to 100 years ago, must have been one of the most busiest areas in Omaru. This is Harbour Street. So, everybody's just getting ready here today to open up for a Saturday with people coming through. What's well, quite nice is they've actually put out a lot of these buildings with the historic sort of shops, like old soaps, ice creams, and things. Dining. It's a steampunk park. Central number nine. Here's a shop from the Fate a few years back, but it also can be quite busy during the weekends. I'll finish this walk about with a trip over to the foreshore. Just head up over the, the railway walking bridge. Dunedin Christchurch train used to run through here and stop for a lunch break quite regularly. Now it's stopped, but you can take the vintage train out along the foreshore to the Penguin Colony on the road. There, I would have loved this as a kid. Learn to ride your bike. Wonderful playground here for the kids. This one might just take big kids. <laughs> A tight rope. Like a 
a dead skate. Anyway, we'll leave you here in uh, Omaru and see where the next place is to visit. Catch you later. So we decided to head into Waibati for lunch, Notley Park, which is just nicely placed for our lunchtime break and a bit of a stroll before we carry it on up the road. Notley Park is about two kilometres from Waimati. It's got uh, 36 hectares, which includes a camping ground and picnicking areas. Really a bit of a hidden jewel for Waimati. Well worth a visit. A picnic. <laughs> no, he's giving up the. I'm only allowed cheese, is it? He's not allowed, it's ham here. Would you like that? Ham. No, I won't have any ham, thanks. <laughs> Milton Lee Park Motor Camp. Hare mai, welcome. Twenty dollars per adult per night, five dollars for each child. Being down here. <laughs> I can't drink my cup of tea. Oh. <laughs> well I decided if Amanda's gonna do this lying around. I'll take a bit of a stroll around the park and the recreational area that's been set up for picnicking. About a 15 minute, 20 minute walk around where you can drive your car and stop off and make yourself at home. We're on the road again, heading towards Timaru. Here we are arriving at the Clermont Castle. It started being built in 1884. The wealthy Rhodes family commissioned the castle as a wedding present for their pioneer settlers George Rhodes and his French bride Henrietta. It was later leased to the Crown and was once the home of Lord Ranfurly, a former governor of New Zealand. We were able to stay on the back lawn for a small donation and wander around the gardens. The property is now owned by Robert Young. He spent the last 15 years doing up the gardens and restoring the house to its former glory. Catholic chapel that was built when they previously used the rooms. Currently Claremont House has been used for a wedding venue or you can do an Airbnb. the wedding venue at the back of the manor as I call it or a castle with lots of rooms there for accommodation but anyway we're on our way thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed our small tour over Labour Weekend it's back to work for us <laughs>